Coming up on Locked On Dodgers, the Dodgers win the wild card game on a walk off homer by Chris Taylor. We'll talk about Taylor's homer, Cody Bellinger's great game, the many moves Dave Roberts made, and more. So let's get Locked On Dodgers. <laughs> You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. I am Jeff Snyder. That is Vince Samperio. I was practicing during the intro to make sure I could point the right direction. And this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every day. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. This is the daily podcast covering the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue and uh, not just the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers, but now the wild card game winner, Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers last night won the wild card game on a walk-off home run from Chris Taylor. Vince, you and I were both there at the stadium. Uh, It's been, wow, it's Time flies. It's been, what, two and a half hours now since the game ended, and uh, I'm still hyped up. Yeah, I'm exhausted. I've been out all day, on my feet all day at the game, but I am wired. I'm not going to sleep anytime soon. And Chris Taylor, you know, if I wish I had more of these shirts because they're gonna, they were just sold real quick uh, after last night's big game. Yeah, man, it was fun. It was, it was fun, even though I didn't get to fully enjoy it as a fan since I was there as a you know credential for work. But either way, I still got to you know celebrate in my own way. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said on the intro, we're going to talk about Taylor's home run. We're going to talk about Cody Bellinger's great game. We're going to talk about Dave Roberts, who you know to the extent that there's a that that it's possible to have a perfectly managed game. Uh, Dave Roberts <laughs> managed that game pretty well. So we're going to talk about all that today, but I, I think first we just got to talk about the, the game winning Homer and, you know, it was set up by Bellinger's walk and, and we we're going to spend a whole segment talking about Bellinger because he had an outstanding game, but, uh, that, that whole, that whole thing, Taylor, the way he started the bat by swinging at the slider in the dirt, you know, it was like, Oh, come on, you know, and, uh, and then Bellinger steals second. And so all they need is a base hit. And with the, with the Cardinals outfield defense, base hits are hard to come by, you know, the not many balls fall in, in that outfield defense because Harrison Bader and Tyler O'Neill can go get the ball. And, uh, you know what, Chris Taylor just said, I'm going to put it where, where Tyler O'Neill can't go get it. And this was something I was thinking about early on in the game, especially after a couple good plays on defense that they made, uh, you know, Ed, Edmundo Sosa notwithstanding, um, you know, Edmund made a good play there there. And they I'm pretty sure they have the best infield defense and best or top, whatever outfield defense as well. So it's one of those where, you know what, we might not score if we don't hit the ball over the wall. And fortunately that's what happened. You know, Justin Turner came through big, crushed a curveball from Wainwright, hit it way out, and then Chris Taylor came through there in the ninth. And it was one of those games where you don't know exactly where it was going to go, and it was a little bit scary. I mean, it was already scary getting as deep as they got into it, but it was getting into scary times, knowing that all the big leverage guys has already really been thrown, knowing what we know with you know kind of this off- Dodgers offense knowing that, you know, we had freaking Steven Souza coming up in a, in a big spot there uh, in late in the game. And, and it was just, you had no idea where it was going. And, and these are the types of games we've seen the Dodgers lose against the Cardinals in the past. And when Tyler O'Neill hit that ball down the right field line in the ninth inning, I thought that was how it was going to end. Fortunately, it, the devil magic missed by a, by a foot or so. And then the, the devil magic didn't miss there in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, the Kenley magic worked in the ninth. You know, Kenley yeah, did give up a base hit, but Kenley, Kenley looked really good. The whole bullpen, you know, in a game where Max Scherzer didn't even make it through five innings, he had to battle to get as far as he did. He was, you know, pushing a hundred pitches. He he clearly didn't have his best stuff, and, and he, to hold the Cardinals to one run, you know, the the Cardinals left at least one runner on base every single inning of this game, and that shows what what Scherzer was able to do, and then. The whole bullpen, Joe Kelly coming in, the Bruce Dark Gratterall, 
you know, all these moves, and, and we're going to talk about more about the moves that Dave Roberts made, but but you can't say enough about the way the bullpen picked up Max Scherzer and, and just kind of put this game on their shoulders and said, okay, guys, it's a tie game right now. It, if you just get us one more run, we'll be fine. That's basically what the bullpen did. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a dominant bullpen performance and being able to set up a roster for just one game, it, it worked out perfectly for the Dodgers here because they, they used six pitchers of the 10 they had available. Obviously Tony Gonsolin was the, the long man. If it had gone to extras, Julio was one that, uh, as I suspected, they, they wanted to, try to stay away from, but he was available. And then they had Vessia and Bickford who didn't get in the game, but you know, they, they had two really good high leverage relievers available still, you know, it was with this bullpen. It's a, it's a really good bullpen Vince. It's, it's very good. And you know, we'll, we'll talk more about the Scherzer decision coming out, but Scherzer just didn't have it. He, even from the first inning, didn't have command of that slider. That's how the ball ended up getting away and, and allowing the first run to score. Never really got the feel for it at any point. Didn't really have a feel for any of his pitches, really. But, you know, it's one of those where he, he you know, the, the cliche, he gutted through it. And, and that's kind of what he did. He just kind of pieced it together. Uh, the Cardinals offense is not that great, but they do have, you know, they, they were able to win 17 games in a row at one point. So, uh, you know, they, they're good enough to score some runs. And he kept them off the board and, you know, came to a point there in the fifth inning where, it's one of those where you kind of want to live or die with Scherzer, but uh, didn't end up happening and, and it all worked out. And, you know, Scherzer was one of the happiest guys there after the game and, and throughout the rest of that game. And it was just fun to see him, you know, be that much into it. And then for the guys to pick him up, you know, the, the defense picked him up there, the, the bullpen picked him up. And then, you know, Chris Taylor with the ultimate pick up there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to play a clip right now from uh, locked on now with Kim Becker and new Locked On Insider Gordon Beckham, former big leaguer Gordon Beckham, talking a little bit about this game. Uh, so I'm going to play that here. You can find the whole clip on YouTube uh, just by searching for Locked On Now. Talk about the last wild card game that brought us to this scenario, the Dodgers with a dramatic ending over the Cardinals. How do you think that momentum is going to carry on for their new series against the Giants? Yeah, I mean, what a, what an ending to the game that we just uh, saw, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing to to watch the Dodgers do what they do. I mean, every year they're just pumping out wins, right? I mean, that was that was an electric electric game um, in Dodger Stadium, and now they got to go up to the Bay to face the team that basically made them uh, have to do that play in game in the in the Giants. And it, it, I just looked at the schedules uh, when they were finishing the season. You had the Dodgers eighteen and three. You had the Giants twenty two and and five to end the season. I mean, it's just stupid. Like some of the some of the numbers here, are unbelievable. I mean, for the Giants to hold off the Dodgers, um, it really shows you kind of what they're all about. But it is going to be an awesome series. I think everybody kind of wanted to see it, and uh, and we got it. So yeah, check out that whole conversation between Kim and Gordon uh, just by searching YouTube for Locked On Now. Uh, we're going to come back in a minute. We're going to talk about all these moves that Dave Roberts did and didn't make. And uh, basically, uh, he pitched a perfect game. And so we're going to talk about that. So keep it locked on Dodgers. Let me tell you about rockauto.com. Rock Auto, as you know, there's a zillion different kinds of cars uh, and makes and models. And no auto parts store can stock all the parts that you're going to need because there's just not enough physical room there. That's why we have things like Rock Auto. Rock Auto is an easy to use website where you can go and they have all the parts for your specific car or truck that you will ever need. You just go there, find your make and model. It'll show you a whole list of parts and you'll notice if you look closely, oh wow, they also cost a lot less than at the auto parts store too. It's a win-win. You don't have to go to auto parts store and you pay less. So why wouldn't you do it? I'll tell you why. Uh, you will do it because rockauto.com is the way to buy auto parts. The only way that, that you should do it uh, if you like convenience and saving money. And I think you do. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And when you buy something right locked on in there, how did you hear about us? So that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com. All right, Vince, let's talk about Dave Roberts. You know, we, uh, we, we talk a lot about Dave Roberts on this podcast, uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. And, and I've kind of harped in the past about how 
I don't think that there are very many right or wrong decisions that managers make. I think it's all shades of gray. You know, I call them the, the 55, 45 decisions where you, you make a move and it's got a 55% chance of working. Uh, but even then 45% of the time, it's not going to work. And that doesn't mean it was the wrong move. It means baseball is unpredictable. Well, you know, in this game, I feel like Dave Roberts picked all the 55s and uh, you know, the, the fact that they happened to work out, basically all of them worked out. Uh, it's just coincidence. You know, it, it very easily could have gone the wrong way. Like you said, Tyler O'Neill's line, line drive down the line almost dropped in. That wouldn't have meant that Kenley Jansen was the wrong choice for the ninth inning. It would have just meant that Kenley Jansen got beat, you know. Uh, but in, in this case, all the moves did work out. But, you know, the taking Max Scherzer out in the fifth inning so often i've actually looked at numbers and the fifth inning is such a bad inning for teams sometimes because you have managers thinking oh i gotta get my starter through five so that he can get the win and dave roberts said i don't care about the win and maybe that's easier in the postseason because these stats don't actually matter you know to the extent that pitcher wins matter they matter more in the in the regular season because you know if somebody's voting on the Cy Young award based on wins or whatever you know if if Julio had been pulled before the fifth inning was over in one of his starts he wouldn't have got a 20 wins all that stuff in the postseason the actual counting stats don't count and so they don't matter so maybe it's easier in the postseason but Max Scherzer did not want to come out of the game. You know, he was not happy about it, but Dave Roberts made that move and it was absolutely the right move. And, you know, going to Joe Kelly there, a lot of people, it was, it was clench your cheeks time, you know, like which Joe Kelly is going to show up and the right Joe Kelly showed up. But uh, what'd you think of that move in particular, Vince? Yeah, I got a lot of texts when that move happened and not too many in favor of Roberts decision and at that point, you know what, for me, Scherzer didn't have it. And, and you know, he was getting through. Uh, he just didn't have it. And, and the, the fact that he put the two runners on before, he got the one out. Okay, cool. You think, okay, ground ball can get him out of it. But he's not a guy that gets a lot of ground balls or not a guy that, ha- you know, he didn't have his off-speed pitches to try to go after a ground ball. Joe Kelly's ready in the pen, which who's a little bit of a wild card. Because, like you said, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. But in terms of pulling Scherzer, right, move, Joe Kelly, yeah, he's a guy that's kind of become a little bit more ground ball. He has a changeup now. He's, he's always had that curveball. He's able to, you know, throw low in the zone. And, you know, he didn't get the ground ball out of it, but he ended up getting out of the inning. And it's one of those where Dave Roberts in the past sticks with Scherzer, like 100% sticks with this guy. It's Max Scherzer. We traded for him. This is what we got him for. Get through five innings. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to go and, and go to the bullpen and, and make that move. And we've seen a lot of teams kind of go to that strategy. The Dodgers have had a little bit different strategy. You know, they don't really – they get their guys through five most of the time, but it's not really an issue. Uh, the, but we've seen other teams who've won World Series in the past or, or have been successful in October go pull their guys at the first sign of trouble. And that, and that's kind of what happened. It wasn't the first sign of trouble, but it was a sign of trouble with – you know, just saw everything else coming to it, 100 pitches, everything else, you know, didn't really have it. It's not like he didn't have it earlier in the game and then kind of built up. He didn't have it at all during the game. He, every inning was kind of a tightrope walk. And, you know, I like the move and obviously it worked out. Uh, but I have receipts to show that I like the move. So if anyone <laughs> wants to check them. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was very much Dave Roberts managing the game with the mindset of I have nine other pitchers available and we have the day off tomorrow. And so, you know, use everybody you need to use getting Scherzer through four and a third that that was plenty here. You know, there, there, the, the, the next move that was uh, a lot of people were worried about was going to Bruce Dark Gratterall in the sixth inning, you know, as kind of the, you know, they brought in Joe Kelly to put out the fire in the fifth and then the first clean inning went to Bruce Dark Gratterall. And that one had a lot of people nervous because uh, Bruce Dark Gratterall has been, he, he, the worst pitcher on the roster on this 10, 10 man pitching staff, Bruce Dark Gratterall is the worst pitcher on that roster. Uh, but if you look at the part of the lineup that was coming up, it was like, okay, if you've decided we're going to need Bruce Dar at some point in this game, giving him a clean inning against the bottom of the lineup was uh, against all righties, you know, not, not, I don't know if Bruce Dar has extreme splits or not, but you know, it's all righties. It's the bottom of the lineup. It, it was, if you think you're going to have to use them, it made sense to use them right there. That's exactly what I thought. You know, bottom of the order, 
the sixth innings early enough to where if he does happen to falter, then you know what you you have time for the offense to make it up. And if he could get the bottom of the order, then great. If not, um, you know, it would have meant that runners it would have meant runners on for the top of the order had it gone that far. But Blake Trinan was probably the next guy in for that with, you know, just to put out that fire if it got there. It was one of those where let me try to sneak this in now, and it worked out for him. Well, we ran into some technical difficulties. Uh, Vince's internet went down in the middle of a sentence. So uh, uh, I'm going to finish this episode up just on my own. Uh, but, you know, Vince's point, he was talking about Gratterall. And I think, uh, you know, the, the the main thing is, I think if Dave Roberts had known for sure that the game wasn't going to go to extra innings, Gratterall probably doesn't get in the game. But knowing that you're going to need uh, the, the potential, seeing that it was one-to-one at that time, you know, uh, Wainwright was pitching well. It was obviously not going to be a super high scoring game. So the chances of extra innings was, was very real. And basically it boiled down to, we'd rather have Bickford and Vesia available in extra innings than using them now. So let's use Gratterall in this situation with the, uh, you know, the bottom of the order against the right-handers. Uh, and, you know, ba- basically it was just move after move. Even the, the offensive players, almost everybody got in the game, uh, the Dodgers had 16 position players. And I think Zach McKinstry is the only one who didn't play. He was in the on deck circle uh, in the, probably the bottom of the fifth, maybe. Uh, Yeah, I think. And uh, when Joe Kelly's spot in the lineup was up second and if Bellinger had gotten on base, McKinstry probably would have batted. uh, But Bellinger, that was the one time he didn't get on base. We're going to talk in a minute about how great Bellinger's game was, but Bellinger struck out. And so they pulled McKinstry back, had Luke Rayleigh hit, uh, which for me, that was a great spot for Luke Rayleigh where, you know, the one thing Rayleigh has is power. He has a chance to maybe accidentally run into one. Uh, other than that, he's not going to do much for you. So it's, it makes sense to do it with an out, nobody on base. You know, if he hits a home run, great. If not, no harm done. Uh, you know, recognizing with Max Scherzer going shorter than they had hoped or expected, that meant that the the bench was going to be taxed more. And so you save your better hitters for later in a different situation. And and so that one made sense to me. Uh, One thing that I actually had a thought about during the game is I wonder if Gavin Lux is more hurt than they're letting on. I don't know for sure. I'm not like making any declarations, but the fact is he – he was in the on deck circle a couple times. He was only used as a decoy pinch hitter in the ninth inning. Uh, leading off, they sent uh, they sent Lux up there to face the right handed pitcher. The Cardinals immediately brought in the left handed pitcher, which then brought Albert Pujols to the plate. That was the extent of of Lux's involvement in the game. Uh, I don't think he started a game since he ran into the wall. Uh, and, and, you know, so I, I wonder if that was part of their thinking and putting 16 position players on the roster was knowing that Gavin Lux might not be as available as they might have liked. Uh, and maybe he was just there as a decoy. But all in all, you know, the, the point of this segment is that Dave Roberts had a great game, managerially speaking, uh, and and he deserves that credit for, you know, we we always – are quick to criticize him when he deserves criticism and definitely need to be quick to praise him when he has a great game like he did here. So I'm going to come back in just a minute. Uh, I want to thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every morning. Uh, We really appreciate it. I'm going to come back and talk about Cody Bellinger because he deserves to be talked about after his great game here. So keep it Locked On Dodgers. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source of everything football. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, baseball, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. All right. Uh, so yeah, last thing I want to talk about today is Cody Bellinger. He went one for two with a single, a strikeout, and two walks. He also had two stolen bases. He started two rallies. One of the rallies didn't come to anything uh, when. Trey Turner came up with bases loaded 
and went out and hit into a double play. Uh, but that rally was started by Cody Bellinger. That was a huge deal. At that point, it was still one nothing Cardinals. And Bellinger leading off the inning with a walk. Uh, and, you know, even though that inning didn't amount to anything, Bellinger deserves credit there. He had a hit later. And then he had the huge walk with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. After, you know, Pujols came up, the first batter hit the ball hard, but on a 3-0 and count. And, and for me, I, I might have preferred to see Pujols take a pitch or two at that point. Uh, I know he's got the potential to hit one out and it would have been storybook ending for Pujols to hit that, you know, a walk-off homer against his former team, all that stuff. You know, they needed base runners and, you know, would have got McKinstry in the game if Pujols had had walked. Uh, But, you know, he hit the ball hard just right at Harrison Bader. Steven Souza on a full count pitch hit the ball hard, but right at Harrison Bader. Uh, and, And then, Bellinger came up facing TJ McFarland, a left-handed pitcher and, you know, worked the count full and worked a walk. And it was huge. It was a huge deal. Uh, it knocked McFarland out of the game as Chris Taylor was coming up. Uh, and, and then, you know, the, the poise and, and Rick Monday and Charlie Steiner after the game on the post game show, I was listening on the radio and they kind of made the point that Cody Bellinger a few weeks ago when he was really pressing probably doesn't take that walk. He, he, he did hasn't always been patient when he's struggling. Sometimes he tries to swing his way out of a slump and that doesn't always work. And so t- for him to take two big walks is a really big deal. It kind of bodes well for where Bellinger is at right now. Obviously we won't know until we see what continues to happen, but to have Bellinger contributing at all in, in the postseason is a big deal. And to have him, putting up great at bats like that is outstanding. And then the two stolen bases, you know, twice he stole second base. Yadi Molina is a very good catcher at throwing out base runners and Bellinger stole second base twice, including setting up the the game winning hit. Yes. Taylor's hit went over the wall. Uh, so in the end, it didn't matter wh- whether Bellinger was standing on first or second, but Bellinger being on second base there changed that at bat. And, and I think it's pretty clear. Chris Taylor credited that said after the game, he said that Bellinger stealing second changed the bat, changed the approach from, from Reyes, all that stuff. And, you know, it changes Taylor's approach too, because at that point, Taylor just needs a base hit and, and he knows that. And so he doesn't have to worry about, okay, I need to find a gap. I need to try to hit a home run. I can just put a good swing on the ball because if I get the ball onto the outfield grass, Cody Bellinger is going to score the winning run. And, and amazingly what happens a lot of the time when, when batters are able to relax and say, I just need to hit the ball hard somewhere. Sometimes those balls go over the wall and you look at Taylor somewhere. It was the beautiful swing. He got a pitch, he got a hanging slider and you know, you can tell he's not trying to hit it out. He sprinted out of the box. He was, you know, he was going to make sure that, you know, whatever happened, he was not going to get himself thrown out. And so he sprinting, sprinting, and then the ball just carried, had the backspin and it got out. And, but Bellinger being on second base was a big factor in that home run from Chris Taylor. And so uh, Bellinger, he didn't get a whole lot of defensive chances, but he, he played solid defense. Uh, And I I guess defense is another thing we could have mentioned in Dave Roberts, uh, his, his moves because Chris Taylor immediately after Taylor came into the game to replace AJ Pollock, Taylor made a very nice play in left field. That I'm not totally sure that AJ Pollock makes. Uh, and, and, you know, so, so many things went right for the Dodgers. And a lot of that was because the Dodgers put themselves in position for things to go right. And Cody Bellinger, maybe first and foremost, uh, for me, obviously Chris Taylor has a walk-off home run. He's the player of the game, but Cody Bellinger is co-player of the game for me, the way he, he got on base and ran the bases and his speed is a game changer anyway excuse me. Um, you know, so even getting, getting on base, he's a guy who can score from first on a double can score from second on a single score on a, on a sack fly, even if it's not super deep, all those things, Bellinger's speed makes a difference. He, we saw it with stolen bases. And so, uh, shout out to Cody Bellinger. Hopefully that's a good sign of things to come for the rest of this postseason. Hopefully it's a long postseason run and Bellinger has some more big moments, uh, and helps his team win like he did tonight. Uh, beyond that, I think that's it for t- for t- tonight. This was a fun game to be at. Uh, things I missed most during COVID was hugging strangers, high fiving strangers at Dodger Stadium, and I got to do a lot of that stuff tonight. It was a fun, exciting game. 
thanks for the atmosphere. Uh, a lot of you guys, I, I think probably uh, six or eight of you listeners to Locked On Dodgers came and said hi to me tonight. Always great to to see you guys. Some who I've interacted with a lot and uh, good to put a name to the face. Some who I, I met for the first time. Uh, I love that. Love being at Dodger Stadium. I don't know when I'll be back. I don't think I'll be able to get to any of the NLDS. Hopefully there will be an NLCS for me to try to get to. Uh, but Dodger baseball is fun. We love talking about it with you guys. We appreciate you guys making us your first listen of the day every day. And now for your second listen, maybe you should listen to Locked on MLB, where Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's free and available on all platforms. If you're not listening or watching every day, we would love if you had one or two days to your rotation. Uh, You can listen wherever you get podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube. Please subscribe in all those places. Don't be afraid to listen and also watch, you know, uh, never hurt anybody to, to do both. Uh, if you have two different podcasting apps, don't be afraid to listen twice and then watch it. You know, uh, if you have family or friends to tell them about it and maybe they'll like it as much as you do, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at locked on Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at Vince Samperio. I'm on Twitter at Snydog and the DMS are open in all of those places. Our email address is lockedondodgers at gmail.com. And our phone number for voicemails or texts is 323-863-LOCK-5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow.